A global ice age has occurred, freezing cities and making survival extremely difficult. Our protagonist Jang are navigating this frozen world, dealing with the harsh realities of scarce resources and the dangers of the environment. He seems to be exploring uncharted territories in search of essential supplies like food and fuel, highlighting the struggle for survival in this frozen landscape. The atmosphere is tense and the visuals convey a bleak and chilling environment, where human resilience is put to the test. Jang struggled to survive against both the harsh environment and the challenges that arise from it. He is seen dealing with extreme conditions, such as an earthquake and breaking ice. He realizes the fragility of their frozen world, comparing human civilization to thin ice that can shatter with a single blow, emphasizing the dire and precarious state of their environment. Zhang is in a dire situation, falling rapidly through a chasm in the ice. With large ice chunks around them, they are in a state of panic, realizing the danger they are in, fearing for their life as they descend uncontrollably, with no apparent way to stop the fall. He desperately grabs onto an ice axe, hoping it will hold as they plummet through the icy chasm. The ice axe makes a sharp impact against the icy wall, creating a burst of ice shards. Zhang desperately tries to halt their rapid descent by striking the ice repeatedly with their ice axe. But the slippery surface and momentum make it impossible to stop. He descent culminates as they crash through layers of ice, heading straight toward a large, futuristic building. The force of the impact sends chunks of ice flying. Zhang finds themselves lying on a bed of snow, relieved that it cushioned their fall. They remark that if it had been ice instead of snow, the impact would have been fatal. Reflecting on their narrow escape, they recall an old saying about surviving a great disaster. Emphasizing the close call they just experienced, he looks hopeful yet conflicted, expressing that there must be something even more despairing in this cold and frozen world. A menacing grin with sharp, jagged teeth, a monstrous creature white skin characterized by its muscular build, multiple eyes, and menacing horns. Towering over a figure below, it exudes an aura of terror as it hunts human beings. Emphasizing the danger it represents in the scene, Zhang with an expression of shock and disbelief, his eyes wide open and glowing as he questions the concept of being I am very lucky. He frantically running away from a monstrous creature with multiple eyes and horns, which is chasing him with a menacing grin. The creature's sharp teeth and glowing eyes emphasize its threat, while the Zhang expression and motion suggest a desperate attempt to escape underscoring his realization that the so-called luck is not worth the peril he's facing. The environment is chaotic, with chunks of ice and debris suspended in midair, emphasizing the intensity and danger of the moment. Zhang is in a state of panic, looking back with a fierce expression as he realizes the severity of the situation. A massive, sharp ice structure is forcefully thrust forward, cutting through the air with intense speed and power. The creature looks up seemingly startled as large jagged ice formations crash down around it. The creature roars ferociously, unleashing a barrage of icy spikes from its gaping maw as it charges forward. The protagonist, appearing small in comparison, desperately tries to escape the onslaught, emphasizing the intense peril of the situation. Zhang observes the ice stalactites crashing down around him, seemingly triggered by the noise and commotion. Despite the danger, these falling ice formations inadvertently provide a temporary shield, helping him survive the relentless assault. He looks up in surprise as massive chunks of ice suddenly start to descend towards him. His expression is changed as he realizes the imminent danger from the falling ice. A massive icicle crashes down with great force, narrowly missing the protagonist as he dives out of the way. The shattered ice splinters around him as he finds himself overwhelmed by a sudden avalanche of ice, desperately struggling to stay above the surface as he faces the terrifying prospect of being buried alive in the frigid debris. Amidst the chaos of collapsing ice and debris, Zhang Hin emerges desperately from the frigid flood, grasping for survival as the torrent threatens to pull him under. His hand reaches desperately ethereal creatures drift nearby. A glowing creature radiates with intense energy, discharging electric bolts that crackle and spread around it, illuminating the dark surroundings with a vibrant blue light. Zhang Hin's glowing eye reveals intense focus and energy. Eyes are wide open in shock, displaying a mix of fear and determination as they intensely focus on something ahead. Zhang finds himself standing confused in the snow, questioning the sudden shift in his surroundings as if he's just snapped out of a vivid daydream. Bewildered by the abrupt change in reality, he turns slightly revealing a mysterious blue mark on the side of his neck. 
Jang appearing weary, decides it's time to head back inside. Feeling he's been out in the cold long enough, he decides to head back quickly, relieved to have found something, even if it's just a small snack, ensuring the day wasn't completely unproductive. Zhang stands at the base of a tall, dilapidated building. He lifts a heavy manhole cover revealing an underground passage, the only viable route home due to the city being encased in ice. He descends into a dark, narrow tunnel using a rope. Zhang observes the dismal conditions inside the building, where people huddle in makeshift shelters, reflecting the severity of their situation that mirrors the harshness outside. Two individuals, visibly weary and bundled against the cold, reflecting the dire situation of those who were trapped in the building when the disaster struck. Emphasizing their struggle for survival, he reflects on the dire circumstances, noting the scarcity of supplies and expressing concern over the unpredictable actions people might take in their desperate situation. Zhang contemplates the moral uncertainty in the apocalyptic world they're living in, recognizing that no one can be certain of their actions or boundaries under such dire circumstances. He appearing cautious and alert, notices that those guys who usually patrol the area are not on duty today, realizing this rare opportunity. They express a sense of urgency to return home quickly, likely to avoid potential dangers. He's standing in front of a door 409 is knocking urgently, as indicated by the sound effects around them. Xiaoming standing at the open door appears surprised or caught off guard by the Zhang who has answered. Zhang referred to as Xiaoming is being questioned about his quick action in opening the door. Xiaoming whose hands are visible appears to be holding Xiaoming's face in a way that suggests urgency or concern. In this tense moment, Xiaoming urgently hugs Zhang telling him to lock the door, suggesting an immediate threat or danger. Zhang is surprised. The blonde girl hugs Zhang with a mischievous smile, expressing eagerness by saying, I just wanted to see you quickly hinting at a playful or possibly deceptive motive. Zhang visibly flustered and blushing, finds himself awkwardly pulled into a playful but intense moment as the blonde girl presses him with a teasing expression, leaving him at a loss for words and overwhelmed by the sudden closeness. In a cozy room, Zhang hastily locks the door, his attention split between securing their space and the playful yet slightly annoyed expression of his girlfriend, who crosses her arms and teases him, clearly feeling neglected in favor of his. Concern for security. Zhang with a proud smile holds up a chocolate bar as he eagerly shows it to his girlfriend hoping to impress her. Zia Ming's girlfriend looks at the chocolate bar with a puzzled expression clearly unsure of what she's been given. Zhang girlfriend embraces him tightly her face lit up with joy and affection as she praises him leaving Zhang blushing and slightly overwhelmed by her enthusiastic response. His girlfriend looks at him with a mix of surprise and slight disappointment noting that he brought only one snack. Zhang explains that he risked his life against monsters just to get it, urging her to eat quickly. Xiaoming turns around, revealing his backpack with a visible blue stain. The girl, clutching the snack bar, looks at Zhang with a mix of suspicion and annoyance, her expression clearly showing that she's not impressed by his offering. Sitting by the warm glow of the fire, Zhang reflects on his struggles, feeling the weight of not finding decent food for days. He contemplates the necessity of using the seeds they had collected earlier, weighing the decision with a sense of reluctance and the pressing need for sustenance in their dire situation. Zhang observes the struggling plants with concern, realizing that consuming the seeds now would eliminate their last hope for future sustenance, leaving them with no alternatives. He reflects on the dire situation, recognizing that if they continue on this path, the mounting stress and despair might drive everyone to the brink of madness. Zhang contemplates the possibility that if the meat of the monsters wasn't poisonous, the people trapped in the building wouldn't have to suffer from hunger or deal with the constant threat posed by those guys. Despite the grim circumstances, Xiaoming finds a silver lining by noting that the fat from the monsters serves as an effective fuel, providing some much-needed resourcefulness in their dire situation. He notices the date on a cracked digital clock, realizing with surprise that amidst their frozen world and struggles, it is Valentine's Day, a stark reminder of normalcy lost. Zhang realizes with a hand to his head in disbelief that he had completely forgotten about Valentine's Day amid their dire circumstances. Zhang enters the room, apologizing for forgetting the significance of the day, only to realize Xiaoming is nowhere to be seen, leaving him puzzled and concerned about her sudden absence. Zhang hears a loud knocking noise echoing through the area, drawing his attention to a door that rattles with each persistent bang. 
Jang senses a familiar signal and recognizes it as Xiaoming's confused and concerned. He wonders why Xiaoming would go outside. Questioning what she might be up to, Jang opens the door, his eyes wide in shock as he sees a large bat poised and ready. The tension in the air palpable. In a sudden, brutal swing, Jang is struck across the face, blood spraying as the impact lands with devastating force. Jang, violently struck, is flung backward with blood trailing in the air as his body crashes against the wall. The force of the attack leaving him dazed and sprawled out on the floor. A man with long hair wielding a large weapon approaches Jang as he lies on the ground taunting him with a mock greeting. Merry Christmas, Brother John, as if savoring the violence he just inflicted. The man grinning smugly and holding his weapon stands with Xiaoming clinging to his side, her expression cold and detached. He taunts John, mocking his shock with a condescending surprise. Jang, bleeding and visibly pained struggles to understand Xiaoming's actions. His voice filled with hurt and disbelief. He demands to know why she chose to betray him and side with Luo Delong. Xiaoming seething with anger confronts Jang, her voice sharp and filled with resentment. She lashes out questioning how he could be so naive and accuses him of thinking he could win her over with something as trivial as a piece of chocolate, exposing the deep rift between them. Xiaoming taunts Jang accusing him of deceit and selfishness, highlighting the large bag Jang carries and suggesting that he hoards food while others suffer. Liu Odalong stands nearby, visibly conflicted, as Xiaoming words cut deep, questioning Jang's integrity and humanity for lying even to her. Zhang, injured and cornered, struggles to defend himself against the harsh accusations. Liu Dalong slams his cane into the ground, exuding dominance as he mockingly expresses sympathy towards Zhang. Referring to him as Brother Zhang, Liu Dalong leans in with a predatory smile, pointing his cane towards Zhang who sits bloodied and cornered against the wall. Liu Dalong's demeanor is smug and condescending offering unsolicited advice. Liu Daolong taunts Jang emphasizing the ruthless reality of their apocalyptic world where only the strong survive. He mocks Jang's inability to provide, questioning who would follow someone who can't even support his own partner, while Xiaoming stands coldly in the background. Seemingly aligned with Liuo's harsh worldview, Liuo Delong reinforces his philosophy of survival, asserting that in their harsh world, the weak have only two options, to rely on the strong or to be exploited by others. Liu Odlong, with a threatening smile and a firm grip on his weapon, demands Zhang to surrender his food. Zhang, with a mix of defiance and desperation, shouts back at Liu Odlong, insisting that he doesn't have any food to give. Liu Odlong wielding his weapon menacingly taunts Zhang, pointing out the consequences of rejecting the protection of the strong, suggesting that without it, Zhang will only be preyed upon by the weak. He challenges Zhang to decide his next move. Luo Delong strikes Zhang's leg with a powerful swing of his weapon, sending him reeling in pain as the impact forces him backward. Luo Delong delivers a brutal strike to Zhang's face, the force of the weapon crushing against his cheek as blood splatters from the impact. Luo Delong strikes Zhang with the blunt end of his weapon, landing a powerful blow to Zhang's side, emphasizing the relentless brutality of the assault. Luo Delong and his gang launch a frenzied attack their faces twisted with malicious intent as they repeatedly strike their victim. Zhang drenched in blood and barely unable to stand. Man reports to his boss that after searching the entire house, they found nothing but rotten millet. The leader, drenched in blood with a menacing glare, dismisses any value in their victims, seeing them nearly as meat to be consumed in their harsh reality. He coldly demands the knife. The scene darkens as the leader, with a sinister smile hidden beneath the shadows, clutches the knife. In the midst of a swirling dark void, the words express a regretful acceptance of the inevitable, a confrontation with the undesired end, a fierce desire to live and defy fate, seeking a second chance at life. Zhang is depicted in a powerful and transformative pose, suspended in mid-air with arms outstretched. Surrounded by crackling blue energy, the electric currents surge around his body, highlighting his silhouette against the dark background, symbolizing a resurgence of life and power. The empty office shows a lone figure slumped over a desk, an eye wide open, glowing with a bright blue light, reflecting shock, fear, or a powerful realization. Jang startled and alarmed slams their hands down as they shout Liu Oda Long. The intense expression on their face and the forceful action. He looks bewildered and slightly panicked, with beads of sweat forming on their face as they ask, what's going on? 
in a state of disbelief, observes his hands and body, realizing that he is completely unscathed. His thoughts race as he grapples with the confusion of his situation, questioning how he can be unharmed when he clearly remembers dying. A towering skyscraper amidst a city blanketed. He can be unharmed when he clearly remembers dying. A towering skyscraper amidst a city blanketed in snowfall. The ominous countdown displayed 28 hours left until the global ice age. This is the end of the video. If you guys want to see the next part, then don't forget to subscribe and like the video.